Good morning. I'm Dan Gepard, the pastor at the Sussex United Methodist Church. We're here and excited to be together, whether we are here in person in our outdoor chapel in Sussex, New Jersey, or whether we are joining online or by telephone, we are all the church together. We've been talking about new beginnings, about the, the beginning of the Bible, about the beginning of the people of God, about the beginning of our lives together, about the new beginnings that face us. We talked about the power of faith, about the power of love. Today we talk about the power of forgiveness. And we celebrate new beginnings right here among us because today we're celebrating a baptism. I'm glad you're here. Let's join together as we sing our opening hymn, which is, <clears throat> excuse me. No, we're not going to sing the hymn yet. First we're going to pray. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this day, for the beauty of the season changing, for the beauty and joy of new life among us, for the chance to celebrate together. We give you thanks for all the things of life, and thank you for the opportunity to be your conveyors of love, your carriers of forgiveness, your people who love you and belong to your own family. We join in this prayer with open hearts and open arms, welcoming you in our, our presence and welcoming each other as well. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ who welcomes us all. Amen. We join in a time of silent confession because we know that we are not perfect. We know that we make mistakes and we know that we fail. So let's take a moment to consider our sins and our faults and lift them up to God asking for forgiveness. And we know that we can be assured that God forgives us whenever we ask. And so I can say with confidence that your sins and mine are all forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now let me invite, before we sing, our family to come forward. I'm going to invite the family of Gavin Richard Russell, the son of Nicole and Bruce, to come forward for baptism. so excited to be together for this event today because it's been a long time in the planning. We were, we were going to do this baptism last March. It was planned just as the pandemic was breaking out and just as everything was shutting down. And so we postponed it, figuring we would postpone it for a few weeks and then a few months and then a few more months. But here we are today and we can celebrate. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through confirmation then and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. Today we present Gavin Richard Russell for baptism. But before we actually baptize Gavin, we ask several questions. We ask these of every candidate for baptism. And when we ask him of a child, we ask the parents and the family and all those around to affirm the answers for him, so that then when he is older, he can affirm those things for himself. So I ask you on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, will you say, I do? I do. You can all join. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression, in whatever forms they present themselves. If so, will you say, I do? I, I do. do. 
You confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord, in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. If so, will you say, I do? I do. Will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church, so that by your teaching and example he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, will you say, I will? I will. will. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, will you say, I will? I, I will. will. You all who sponsor this candidate support and encourage him in his Christian life, so will you say, I will. I, I will. will. And you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ, so will you say, we do. We, we do. do. Will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life, including this person now before you in your prayer? If so, pray with me silently as I read. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this person with a community of love and forgiveness, that he may grow in his faith and trust of God and be found faithful in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. And if you will concur in that prayer, will you all say with me, Amen. 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 Let's join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. Do you believe in God the Father? I, I believe, believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought forth through the Jordan and to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth, tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of the womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. So declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Bless this gift of water and the one who receives it to wash away his sin and clothe him in righteousness throughout his life that dying and being raised with Christ, he may share in his final victory. We praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May God bless you always, and the Holy Spirit work within you so that being baptized in water and in spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ now and always. Live in love and compassion and care. Amen. That's a great thing, because you're part of the family. You're all part of the family. Mother here is like a new sister to you. I'm like a new brother. Marcia is like a new sister. But all the people out there are brothers and sisters.
Let me say it is now our joy to welcome our new brother in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in a royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus, and with joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. And as a member, when you're, when you're a member of the family, you get presents. So we have presents. First, the, the one you can save for later is a certificate that says that you're part of the family. And then we have a book of Bible stories for you to read later. And here's a book of Bible stories that's very kind of about, about God that's easier to read when you're very younger. And then we have something to hang on to and something to play with, which I just discovered will talk. You press the button. <laughs> How cool is that, huh? And there's a bank for you. There's so right here, and these flowers are for you to celebrate this day as well. So again, let's welcome our newest brother in Christ. Congratulations, the family. We're so excited that you're here. Thank you so much. It's always our custom when we baptize to sing this next hymn. We'll sing, I was there to hear your morning cry. you to listen for a word from God as we read from the Holy Scriptures. We're reading a continuation in the book of Genesis. We're reading the story about Joseph. Joseph was something of, well, he was something of a dad's boy when he was a little kid. He was something of a spoiled child because his father loved him so much more than his brothers. His brothers were annoyed at him all the time. And they finally got so mad that they sold him into slavery in Egypt. While he was there, he prospered though, and he saved the people from a terrible famine. 
by seeing what could be done to provide food. And so eventually his brothers were brought back to be with him as they came to try to buy food, not knowing that it was their brother who was now this important Egyptian official. He saw them and he recognized them, but they did not recognize him whom they had sold into slavery so long ago. This is where the story picks up. We begin with verse, chapter 45, verses 1 to 15. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of the Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. But now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there be, will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. So hurry and bring my father down here. And then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his father talked with him. A word from God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. So now I want to talk to kids for a minute. Did you ever put on your shoes backwards and put the wrong shoe on the wrong foot? I don't know whether I did or not. I can't remember. But I know it would be uncomfortable. Sometimes in the dark I wake up and I put slippers on or shoes on to go downstairs. And it's so dark I get them backwards and it's not comfortable. That's why people used to say, you got up with your, you have your shoe on the wrong foot. The shoe on the wrong foot is uncomfortable. That's the way Joseph's brothers felt when they found out who he was, because they felt bad that they had treated him so badly earlier. Sometimes people are mean to us. Sometimes they say things that are not kind, that are, they're mean names, they call us names, they tease us. They say bad things about us to others behind our back when we're not watching. They're just mean, and it bothers us so much when we discover it. We have to decide how to act. Sometimes brothers and sisters are mean to each other. That's when our parents teach us. Our parents will say, now what should you say when you're mean to, to your brother or your sister? They want you to apologize. They want you to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did that mean thing. And when you do apologize, your brother or your sister is told, well now, you should make up. You should be friends again. You should, you should play together. You should be okay with each other again. We learn that way how to forgive, how to be nice and make friends with people again, even after they have done something bad. If we don't ever do that, all we can think about is how mean they were, how unkind they were, and how we felt hurt how our feelings were hurt. If we don't ever forgive anybody, we never get to be friends with them again. We learn that 
because it's an important thing with us in our relationship to everybody as we grow up. And we learn that in connection with how we behave toward God because we do things that are wrong and God forgives us. When God forgives us, we can be back and feel like part of God's family again. We can feel okay about ourselves. We don't have to be upset either way. When we are mad at somebody, it upsets us. It makes our stomach hurt sometimes. It makes us concentrate on that thing that makes us mad all the time. When we have hurt somebody else's feelings, we feel bad too. The only way out of that trap is to forgive each other and to be friends again. So let's pray. God, we thank you for giving us the opportunity and giving us the example of forgiveness. You forgive us all the time when we do things that are wrong. And you teach us how to forgive others. And for that, we give you thanks. Amen. We have talked about all kinds of things associated with new beginnings. We have talked about the beginnings of creation, how humans are created in the image of God, not because we look like God, but because God loves us like family, because we are important to God and therefore should be important to each other. We talked about trusting God as a rescuer in times of trouble, even when the rescue takes a long time, as it did for Noah and his family in the flood. We talked about the power of faith, Abraham and Sarah's faith, as they wandered looking for their home and how they could learn to be a blessing for others wherever they were, just as we can too. We talked about the power of love, about the love of Jacob for Rachel, about how love makes a difference in the world, how we're willing to do things and, and go through things and last a long time. You can endure all kinds of things out of love. The last story in the book of Genesis is about forgiveness. It's about forgiveness of jo by Joseph of his brothers who had treated him terribly. You think about all that he had gone through and you think about just the fact that his own family was so mad at him that they sent him away from home for years and years and years and he never knew if he was going to see them again. Imagine how hurt that would make you feel to be sent away from home for years and years and years and never know if you would see your family again. It would have been perfectly understandable for him to feel mad, to feel a grudge, to want to get even, to want thing, them to be punished for doing such a bad thing. You know how it is to feel, to carry a grudge, I suppose. Most people, I think, at one time or another have nursed a grudge. A grudge is more than just being angry. A grudge is where we have angry feelings about something that has happened to us, something that was so unfair and so hurtful that we can't seem to forget it. It's still important to us and we tell the story to other people over and over. We tell the story to people about how we were doing the right thing and somebody else did something terrible to us. It was so unfair, so unjust. If they don't seem to understand how unfair it was, we can find ourselves embellishing the details, describing the tone of voice of the other person as is smirking or, or sneering at us. We can describe the facts in an exaggerated way to make it clear that we have been treated wrongly. We can tell ourselves over and over and remind ourselves how we were in the right and they were in the wrong. It can eat away at us sometimes for years, sometimes for years. We don't have to want to hurt anybody else. But we can't seem to let go of it. When we do that, we hurt ourselves. Because, first, it annoys us. It grinds away at us. It bothers us. It bothers us again and again whenever we remember. It also prevents us from ever really being reconciled, from ever really being friends again. Those kinds of situations also hurt the person who has done something wrong. When we know that we have done something wrong to somebody else, it bothers our conscience. It undermines our feelings about ourselves. Our self-image is, is sort of beaten down because we're ashamed of the fact that we have done something wrong. And sometimes we're so embarrassed that we don't want to go back and apologize. 
we don't want to go back and try to make things right because, well, it just drags it all up again. And it's been so long. The longer it is, the harder it is to imagine how we would go back and make amends. How we would, what we would say, how we would explain why it's been so long before we apologized. These things can go on and on. I've seen families that have been torn apart by some old argument so many years ago that it's hard to understand even what the argument was originally about. You know what it is even like among nations when they hold grudges against each other. There are groups of people around the world, you can think of them, think of the Middle East, think of places in Asia, think of places used to be in Northern Ireland, people were fighting on and on and on about the same grudges, the same disagreements, the same frustration, and there never seems to be a way toward peace. Every time somebody tries to make a move toward peace, somebody else brings up the grievances, brings up the injustices, brings up the ways in which people have been mistreated, and again, <coughs> things fall apart. These things can go on and on. But there is a gift from God, that God shows us how God forgives us, and that gives us the opportunity to nurture the ability to forgive others. We're taught as children to forgive each other at little slights. We how to forgive people in our family or people on the playground, how we can forgive things that they do, like taking a toy away from us and not being kind to us in, in a classroom situation. We can learn how to deal with those things, and we can nurture those by practice. The big things that hit us in life are hard to forgive, are hard to forgive, and those rely on God's gift of grace, God's forgiveness of us as a reminder that we are able to forgive others in all kinds of circumstances. And there is not just a desirability to forgiveness. There is a power in forgiveness. When we forgive somebody, really and seriously, that opens the possibility that we can talk as equals. It opens up the possibility that we can start a relationship fresh, that we can start things anew, that we can think about people in a different way. That's especially important in times like this, when people feel so divided and so polarized because of politics or because of things going on in the country or things we hear about on the news. We begin to associate only with people we know agree with us. We begin to talk only with people we know share our views, and then we repeat them again and again and begin to have a hard time thinking of other people as rational at all. We have a hard time imagining them as decent and kind and good people, aside from the fact that they just disagree with us. When we do that, we separate ourselves from each other. The idea of forgiveness is so important. I'm not talking about saying we should not prosecute people for doing something illegal or evil. I'm not saying that people shouldn't be accountable for their actions. I'm not saying that we shouldn't apologize when we do wrong. It's not the individual things I'm thinking of. It's the fact of being reconciled with each other as people. Being family, again, depends on forgiveness. Forgiveness has a power to be able to think of other people as people and try to develop a relationship with them creates power. It creates new possibilities. It creates the possibility of restored family. That is what God wants of us, is restored family. A family of love, a family of kindness, a family of forgiveness. That's why I think the book of Genesis ends with this story and not the story of love. It's the story of forgiveness because forgiveness makes love possible. Forgiveness makes faith possible. Forgiveness makes hope for the future possible. That is where things begin. That is where things begin for us as a church, as a family, as a country, as a people in the world. This is God's gift and hope for us. This is what God offers us again and again. I forgive you. That's what baptism is a sign of. Baptism is a sign of God's forgiveness and love. Church is a sign of God's forgiveness and love. Life is a sign of God's forgiveness and love. Let's take those gifts in gratitude and live in love this week as we look for ways 
to find the things that are annoying to us, say, I love you anyway, because God loves me anyway. Amen. Now will you join me in prayer? Lord God, we give you thanks for this day, for all the joys that we share in each other's presence, for all the joys in our lives that give us hope. We give you thanks for Gavin and his parents and his family. We give you thanks for brothers and sisters. We give you thanks for all of our relatives, but also all of our church family. We give you thanks for all those who care about us and care for us and lift us up. We offer prayers of healing for those who are sick and struggling. We particularly lift up Diane and Ted, Karen and Augie, Marie and Tyler, and Warren, Holdwin, and Lynn's son, Corey, and his wife, Linda, who are now suffering from COVID. We also lift up all those who are facing surgery for John and for Gail's granddaughter, Skylar, who's facing heart surgery on Wednesday, and for her parents, Shannon and Josh. Lord, we lift all these up to you, knowing that you care about us, that you do not let go of us, no matter what. And so we also lift up the people who are struggling with fires, with wildfires in the West and hurricanes in the South, with struggles everywhere, because you love us all. Help us to know what to do to help others. We come before you in this confidence, the confidence of children in your own family as we pray the words you taught us to say in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to thank you for being the church, for being kind and loving to each other and making such a difference in our community. We're going to continue to meet outside as best we can, if the weather permits, through, the, through October, and watch how the pandemic develops, so whether it'll be safe to go inside. We'll go inside if the weather's terrible, but we'll try to keep watching. You've been very blessed with good weather so far, and I'm grateful that you're here, either online or on in, pre in the presence in the chapel. It's a wonderful thing that we can be the church wherever we are. We're, we're continuing to serve our community by gathering school supplies. We're also adding to that coats. There is a need among some of our school kids in the area for new winter coats. So we invite you to bring in boys or girls coat sizes 4 to 14. Bring them to the fellowship hall during church hours, or you can make monetary donations toward them. In addition to your regular donations, send those to Sussex United Methodist Church at P.O. Box 244, Sussex, New Jersey, 07. Four six one. You can also give online at gnjumc.org slash online giving. We're also collecting N95 masks for the Skylands Outreach Depot to help fill cleanup buckets and flood buckets to send in emergency situations all around the country through the United Methodist Committee on Relief. We've given a lot of the, the masks that we had to hospitals early in the pandemic and re refilling that supply now. I hope you'll continue to support the church in all that you do. Be kind to each other. Be kind to those around you. Say a kind word to everybody you meet, in the grocery store, at the gas station, in the restaurants, wherever you are, we can be the church together. We'll continue to meet our small groups. On Tuesday evening, we've moved that up to 6 o'clock. And on Friday afternoon, we'll be online on Zoom at 2 o'clock. I hope you'll join then. Let me invite you to Join together in celebrating as we sing our closing hymn, Baptized in Water. Oh. 
Joyfully now we sing because we can go from this time and place to love and serve the Lord and all those around us. We can forgive as we go all the hurts that we have suffered, making new possibilities for relationships, for a beloved community, for a people of love. We can do that without worrying, without being afraid of anything because we know that wherever we go and whatever we do, and whatever happens to us, the love of God, the parent of us all, the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit will go with us and abide with us now and always. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. you all. Have a great week.